call from Gazelle, California. Who in the heck is that? Okay, so let's go to integument. Okay, the integument is the skin. Epidermis, dermis, and hypodermis, the subcutaneous. Bone. So epidermis is made out of stratified squamous. Dermis is made out of dense irregular connective tissue, blood vessels, nerves, uh, dense, uh, yeah, dense irregular connective tissue. There's adipose cells in the dermis. The dermis is where the blood vessels are. There's no blood vessels in the epidermis. Accessory structures such as sweat glands start in the dermis. Uh, there are nerves there, blood vessels, arteries, and veins. The subcutaneous layer is also called the hypodermis. It's below the dermis. The epi is upon the dermis. Okay, so what does the integument do? It protects, it controls temperature, it stores, stores vitamin D, for instance. Uh, it allows you to feel pain, to feel heat, to feel pressure. And it uh, excretes waste in the sweat glands and secretes sweat. So if we look at a picture of the integumentary system, make sure you there'll be questions exactly like this on WebAssign. You can see that the epidermis has no blood vessels. You can see that the dermis has blood vessels, red arteries, blue veins, sweat glands. It has touch and pressure receptors. Uh, it has hair follicles. Uh, so it has sebaceous glands. Sebaceous glands uh, secrete a waxy material to help waterproof the hair shaft, uh, the touch and pressure receptors are there to allow you to respond to touch and so on. Other receptors or other nerves will allow you to respond to heat and so on. Okay, so the epidermis. So if you look at the, this epidermis in the, on the palms and the soles of the feet, there are five layers. Uh, in other parts of the body, there are only four. We'll talk about that in a moment. So make sure you know all of these terms and where they're located. We'll repeat this information. The epidermis is stratified squamous. So... These are the layers you should know. Stratum germinativum, spinosum, granulosum, lucidum, and corneum. So if we go back to the picture, uh, the bottom layer is the stratum germinativum. The top layer is the stratum corneum. We'll have pictures that are enlarged, but we'll look at those layers that you should know. So here is skin that's on your palms and the soles of your feet. So this is the stratum corneum. All these cells are dead. The stratum lucidum is uh, a layer that's only found in the palms and the soles of the feet. It's clear, it's usually clear. Next is the stratum granulosum. The stratum spinosum has spines. The stratum germinativum uh, is where the cells grow and divide. So as they grow and divide, they migrate, they're pushed up, and all of the stratum corneum is uh, saturated with keratin protein to make it waterproof. So this is the cutaneous membrane all throughout your body. So the stratum germinativum is right on top of the basement membrane. Uh, it's where cells divide, cells are replaced, and it has melanocytes. Everybody has a different amount of melanin, skin pigment. 
Next, we have the spiny layer, as I said, the granulosum, uh, and the clear layer. Keratin granules are in the cytoplasm. But that's where they become waterproof. And uh, as the cells are pushed to the outside, they lose their nucleus and they become waterproof. Stratum corneum, dead cells, they're full of keratin, or they're all cornified, they're tough. A keratin is a tough water resistant protein. Melanocytes make pigment, they provide UV protection. There's also keratin and hemoglobin blood pigment that's flowing in the arteries and veins. So melanocytes are uh, a cell that secretes pigment. Uh, when you get sunburned, you increase your mel melanin pigment. And depending upon your ancestry and your ethnic group, you have varying amounts of melanin pigment. So UV radiation activates synthesis of vitamin D3. Uh, you can get sunburnt on your skin. You get wrinkles like I have. You can also get cancer. So stay out of the sun. If you get your skin burned, you got a better chance of getting malignant melanoma and basal cell carcinoma. So that's what they look like, skin cancer. A lot of people in Texas have basal cell carcinoma. I've taught a lot of students who work with dermatologists and a lot of old Texas ranchers, uh, they have what they call Mo surgery and they cut this whole thing out or otherwise it's gonna metastasize and it could become a big problem. So the epidermis is many layers, prevents fluid loss, protects from the UV radiation, uh, produces vitamin D3 and resists damage from abrasion chemicals and pathogens. The layers of the dermis, the papillary layer is just underneath the epidermis. We'll tell you what dermal papillae are. It has loose connective tissue, it provides nerves, lymphatics, and capillaries. So the reticular layer, we'll show you what those are, that's where collagen is, collagen fibers, and elastic fibers. So uh, other systems are in the dermis, cardiovascular, lymphatic, nervous. Okay. The dermis provides mechanical strength, flexibility, and protection. It has a lot of blood supply and a lot of sensory receptors. So that's why you can feel light touch deep pressure, pain, temperature, uh, and uh, pain, temperature, light touch, and so on. Okay, let's, we'll talk about the subcutaneous layer. We'll talk about those things. Okay, so the epidermis is the thin layer on top. The dermis is below that. So you can see the epidermis is thin, thin layer, and everything below that is the dermis. Below the dermis is the hypodermis. Hair follicles uh, start with the hair papilla, where hair cells grow and uh, are produced by the hair papilla. The hair follicles are lined with epidermal, epidermal tissue. So 
all the dermis is from right below the epidermis all the way to the hypodermis. So hair follicles, notice how they're lined with epidermal tissue, as is the sebaceous gland. The sebaceous gland uh, secretes a waxy material to help waterproof the hair. Uh, I want you to know what a hair papilla is. That's where uh, hair cells are produced and the cells grow to produce a hair root. And everybody knows when you get goosebumps, that's because of the contraction of the erector pili muscle. So you'll have questions in WebAssign about these various structures. I'm not gonna get into, all I want you to know is the erector pili muscle, the hair shaft, you don't have to worry about the rest of these things. Okay, we won't worry about this one. Won't worry about that. Okay, let's let us let's stop. Let's stop recording. Oh, we got more people coming in. Okay, stop recording for the first fifteen minutes.